welcome to Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre. I think if I keep calling it that, they'll just have to name it that when I shortly die. Um, we have for you this week Susie Dent from Off of Countdown. It's going to be a lot of fun. So if you like these, go to www.gofasterstripe.com slash badges. Buy us a badge. No, we'll buy yourself a badge. Don't buy us one. We've got loads already. Uh, and then that money will go to make filming more of this stuff. Thanks very much. I hope you will enjoy the podcast. Goodbye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. <laughs> Please welcome a man who, since last week, has had sex with a baboon and Vic Reeves was right. It's Richard Harry. <laughs> Much. Had some trouble with the microphone backstage there. Professional, I covered it. No one noticed. Welcome to the Left Square Theatre. Welcome to another episode of Rich Herring's Left Square Theatre podcast. But I was, um, I was down at the uh, petrol station <laughs> uh, the other day, and there's a kids drinking Quattro. I don't know if you. It's four different flavours of in one drink. They called it. They said, "Hey, you're the guy from Rehearsal to Put." So I don't know if that's, uh, don't know if that's a thing. So. Uh, you're much better than last week's audience. I said they were rubbish. So uh, it's we've got uh, David Frew there alone. None of it's this very. Uh, it's not like the kind of top you usually wear. David, is that a new? Is this a new thing you've got? Oh, I've had it for months. You've had it for I've had it for months. It's very quick. You look very, very nice. It's very trendy. I'm gonna next week. I'm gonna say I was with David Frew, the nuclear physicist. <laughs> Wearing his little top is nice. So uh, you're still wearing the same shirt as last week. <laughs> I'm the god of tits and wine. Uh, so, uh, Vic Reeves, you were hoping Vic Reeves will be back. <laughs> you've, you've featured a lot, haven't you? It's because you sit in the front row. Uh, and there's a, there's a man with... Uh, I like this man because his T-shirt says idiot. <laughs> and that is that's the kind of person who should be at the show. Uh, so uh, I'll, uh, we'll see if there's anyone else I can check. This is a new lady. This is a new gentleman and lady. Are you? Have you been before? Uh, yeah. Yeah, OK. Have you been before? Yeah. Yeah, of course, yeah. What's your name? Horsey. Hors Horseshoe. 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 Doesn't sound like the kind of name that we are allowed in our country anymore. <laughs> By this stage. <laughs> so, well, I don't really like doing that joke. I did that joke last week and now I sort of feel, oh, God. Uh, what, what do you do for a living, Horsey? Uh, I'm working for a law firm. You're working for a law firm? Taking, our, taking jobs that none of us could do. Because <laughs> we're too fucking stupid. We're the stupidest country, aren't we? You're from here, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Stupidest people in the world, aren't we? <laughs> Have you ended up with this lovely lady? Um, luck. Okay. Oh, that's nice. It's nice, this well pressed shirt. Do you press your own shirts? Who, who does the ironing? That's why he's with the girl. <laughs> yes. Do you do the ironing? <laughs> you work in a, no, you work in a law firm. Where'd you get, where'd you, where'd you get them done? Did your mum do it? <laughs> <laughs> it's what? The cleaner. Wow, look at that. Fuck it. It's my. It's got, it's got a clean. Ooh la la. I've got one too as well. Uh, they'll be sent back as well, won't they? So. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. It was funny because it's true. Uh, so, um. We'll, uh, we'll crack straight on. Uh, so I, uh, my guest this week, I'm very excited about, because I love words, and you will know her from her, she's best known for her appearance on Nevermind the Full Stops, <laughs> which has come up a few times <laughs> on this show. Please welcome Susie Dent, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> come on in, Susie. <laughs> come in, sit down. Pull up a microphone. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Good. Do you remember being on Never Mind the Full Stops? I do. God, I hate. I was on. I was on it. I hated that show. You were only on one episode. Yeah, I was only on one. Wasn't your show? No, it was exactly my show. It was. Did you come up with it? No. No. Good. Yeah. No. I hated the guy. I hate Julian Fellows. Do you? Only from being on Never Mind the Full Stops. He does know everything, and he gets very cross about things. Yeah. Exactly. You'd be good at that though. No, I had a big argument with him about the Oxford comma. Did I you? remember. Yes. Yeah, the bloody Oxford comma. <laughs> yeah, what's the Oxford comma? 
The Oxy it was a song by the Vampire Weekend. Okay. By by Vampire Weekend. Uh, the Oxy Comma. Do you really want me to say? Yeah, the Oxy Comma. This is what this is show is going to be like. So it's going to be anybody intellectual. Does know what the Oxy Comma is? Yeah. Yes. Oh, you know that, do you? You know anything about Louis Brunel? I mean, I would, ma- I would imagine. <laughs> What's the, what to, I obviously know as well, but for the viewers and the listeners at home. Okay, the Oxford comma is the serial comma. So it's the comma that is yeah. drummed out of us at school that you uh, put before and. Okay. And it, it makes absolute sense, but trust me, it can be boring to no, anybody but me. Well, I'm with the, we're, this is where we're going to be all the way through. Uh, <laughs> I, did, I didn't enjoy, never mind the full stops, I have to say. Okay. Uh, but um, So, you're a, a lexicographer. Yes. Yeah. Sort of, yeah. So, so, I had to look that up. Uh, <laughs> though I think you're a sexicographer. <laughs> Yay. And there's no, there is no word of that because there has never been a sexy one before. So, uh, this, <laughs> you're the first... Uh, isn't I, when I was at school, I like to go into the school library yes. and get the dictionary out and look yeah. up the rude, rude word, words like bum. Yeah. And fart. then laugh. Fart. I'd fart. Up some In my bum. dictionary, it's always a windy escape backwards. <laughs> so it's, uh, I think it's been updated a bit. It's since a weird thing because when you're a kid, you're only looking up words that you already know. If you're looking up rude words, it's, you're unlikely to chance across. <laughs> so it's it's like just affirmation of what you already know, isn't it? When you're doing that. But I remember yeah. it being a thrilling. Is that why you wanted to become a... <laughs> uh, no, I started off in completely different um, areas. I started off in French and German. I mean, essentially, I was born to be a geek. I always, always wanted to be very sporty. Yeah. I tried my hands at so many sports. Brilliant at 60 metres, and then was always sick. <laughs> uh, and I realised that it probably wasn't going to be for me. But I remember even in assemblies being really excited when they read out house captains and sports captains and I desperately wanted to be a sports captain and I was always chief librarian which for <laughs> me was just there was the deportment cup as well I once won the deportment cup wow. to sit up but yeah that's how sad <laughs> I was and I couldn't really escape it so anyway I always loved dictionaries but French and German ones right. and so I was always the one sitting in the back of the car with a vocabulary book <laughs> just spotting up on German phrases that's good I, that's what is we, it? these people are nerds so are this you? is they all identify they're all just sitting there feeling good about themselves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but when you're working and it's your job, did yeah. how much of the day do you spend looking up rude words in the dictionary? Uh, now rude now? words? Yeah. Um, well, the thing about me and rude words yeah. is that I don't... Uh, if you ask Rachel Riley, who I work with, um, she will say, I know the dictionary, I know everything in the dictionary, which I don't, but apart from the rude words. Right. So when something like um, growler, for example, came up... <laughs> Nick said to me, what's a growler? And I said, it's a personal thing that growls. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Rachel was just off, uh, or crouched over. And Nick and I often just operate at this level, and Rachel's on a completely different one. So famously, uh, I was doing, in my Origin of Words section, if you've ever seen it, I, was, I decided to jazz things up a bit, and it was we, we record five shows a day. Uh, and three in three day blocks. So by yeah. the 15th show, we are on our knees. And I thought, right, this is the one I'm going to do the history of underwear, the vocabulary of underwear. And I got through suspenders and stockings, and you know, Nick was looking interested. <laughs> and then I got to the teddy, and which Nick was, do you know what a teddy is? I do know yeah. what a teddy is. Do you, you know what a teddy is? And Nick was looking really bemused by this. <laughs> I said to him, Nick, I, uh, I don't suppose you've ever come across a teddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Martin Lewis was sitting next to me. He disappeared, but I just carried on regardless. Nick, Nick and I were just both having an entertaining discussion about underwear, but everybody else was, yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing about me. I, I mean, I remember the farting one. Yes. I remember coming across, um, I tweeted about this recently, a thorough cough. Okay. Which is when you cough and fart at the same time. Okay. Um, that's from the 1800s, so they liked it even then. Um, and... I mean, now, every single rude word is in the dictionary. Yeah. I'd love to do a programme about is, history as well. What is the rudest word in the world? The rudest word? Yeah, I want to see if I've heard it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, OK, well, if you ask my daughter, my youngest, who goes through it in the supermarket the other day, literally, she was saying, Mum, what's the P word? Uh, and she thought that the C word was not even crap. She thought it was carp. <laughs> so I haven't disabused her of that. Yeah. Uh, and she was told that the B word was blistering as well so that but obviously those aren't rude what's the rudest word well if you go back 
to that my, one of my favourite dictionaries is called the Classical Dictionary of the Vulgar Tongue. <laughs> Excuse me, I can't even say it. <laughs> Classical Dictionary of the Vulgar Tongue, yeah. which was written by this um, uh, this man called Francis Gross, and he had been a soldier, and soldiers are well known for their swearing habits. Uh, and he was gross by sort of stature as well as gross by nature, but he was an amazing person. He used to go out at night and visit all the brothels and uh, gambling dens and taverns. You know, yeah. he was lived at the same time as Samuel Johnson. Johnson just looked to the literary giants, and Groves just hung out with the high women and the cut purses and the, yeah. you know, the thieves and the prostitutes. Anyway, he came up with this dictionary, which is wonderful, fantastic. And it, there's many, many rude, well, kind of rude words, as you would likely to find. He's quite rude, actually. Um, but just funny, like blind Cupid was slang for a bottom. Right. It was funny. Um, bread and butter was the missionary position. They talk about bread and butter. Lots of sexual positions in that in that dictionary. Um, and lobcock I quite like as well. Okay. Lobcock is just the biggest insult of the 1800s, and it <laughs> literally means relaxed penis. Okay. But yes, I've got a lobcock. That's now it means an erection, though, doesn't it? I've got a, a lobcock. Lob is a lob it? See, I told you I don't yeah. know all this stuff. Well, now I'm coming to You're doubt myself. I, you know, I, thought, <laughs> I thought I knew everything there was to know about... Well, I like they used to call, in medieval times, they used to call a skirt a fuck sail. Uh, <laughs> well, fuck, the first, yeah. the first reference of that is in a surname in the Oxford English Dictionary. So, in the, I think it's in the 1400s, uh, there was somebody called Roger Le Windfuck. Right. Uh, that, was, that was the first, literally the first evidence we have. Of and the, that of did the word come fuck. from that, did he like having sex? Uh, well, that was also, I think even today, a windfucker is a hawk. Right. Um, so, because they, you know, they sort of ride the okay, waves. They do. The, the, not the waves, <laughs> the air. The, the um, air waves. That's but yeah, lots of, lots of words, like Bilberry as well. There was somebody called Gustav, Gustavo Bilberry or something. Anyway, lo lots and lots of surnames give us our first. Our first words, herring maybe as well. You never herring. know. Yeah. It's a good name. There's nothing funny about the random herring. <laughs> <laughs> it does. I think it means herring means penis somewhere because I think I've worked. Wor yeah, because I've worked because I'm, I'm oh, my first name's Dick and my second name is Herring. So when I was writing my book, Talking Cock, which has a lot of euphemisms for penis in it, if you yeah. want to check Did you that have out. Did cock in there? Did I have lobcock? I didn't know. No, okay. I didn't go medieval. I just, you know, there was enough I'd made up. Because sure I, well, I try, I, you know, there's a brilliant thing called the Vis Profanosaurus. Do you have you seen Vis Profanosaurus? Yes, I have. So, well, that, I like that kind of poetry of the gutter, and it's sort of more. I did know about. I'd read your you know, article about Johnson and Gross. So oh, I, okay. I knew so you knew about that. I did but know a little bit about that, but only from re researching uh, what th for this. But they weren't always considered so rude. That's the thing. Yeah. That, you know, so even like our most taboo words. Um, well, I think fuck has always been quite rude, and the C word always quite rude. Which um, what's the C word? Uh, carp. Carp. Okay. Carp. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but some of them really weren't considered too rude, and it's yeah. just more, you know modern sensitivities. Well, it is, but it's weird that they're all just words. So like, I, mean, yeah. well, I, I love playing Scrabble, and obviously I love Countdown as well, obviously. Uh, but you know, it, what I quite like about Scrabble is, or just if it's in the dictionary, it counts. So it doesn't matter. You know, it can be a, the most horrible word that you would never yeah, yeah. say. All that matters is it's it's that, it, that it's a word and it scores some points. Yeah. And there's a kind of equality to that. So it's kind of odd by making a rude a word rude, you give it a power that doesn't it's that really doesn't it's exist. It's a fascinating subject, as you say. Yeah. yeah. It is. It is. So it's it's, it's only by being it. offended by it that you give it the power. So if you yeah. weren't offended by those words, it wouldn't they wouldn't have any power. So it's it's sort of. Uh, Interesting. If I worked on a dictionary like you do in the dictionary world, yeah, because I play Scrabble, I would just put loads. I'd make up loads of new words that would be good for Scrabble. Like, vu would be a good one. Meaning. Well, do whatever you like. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't get as long as just as a word. A vu, a word that doesn't mean anything but is there, so it'll be useful for Scrabble. That's a yeah. vu. Can yeah. You, can a you view. stick that in? Because yeah. I hate having u and v in Scrabble. They're bad in count then as well. They are. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Okay. Yeah. Cause if I want to get a word in the dictionary, what do I have to do? Because I've got the word called pumpkin that I would like to get in the uh, dictionary. I knew that would which come Which is up. a thing that I What's accidentally this? created. Well, it's actually, there is a definition online. I, I was talking about pumpkins in the show and I accidentally said pumpkin. And then I imagined what that might be. And uh, what it is, as it turns out, from the, is, a, is a pumpkin that five men have ejaculated into and then... <laughs> Then a, w a woman puts Why on their head. <laughs> I mean, five or more. Just okay. it's got to be several men. Why five? And then a woman puts it on her head. I puts it on her head. Yeah. So it's like a you know a pumpkin for, that you would have in Halloween. 
Have you ever put a pumpkin and on then, your head? And then you put it on your head and it's full of, you know, ejaculant. Ejaculant. How, do I, how would I get that into the dictionary? Because <laughs> I don't think it's in at the moment, but I've no, used it now it in two different podcasts. Yeah, so I think you've got to do a lot more than that. Okay, yeah. uh, okay. democracy is all, so yeah. it's all about usage. So get millions and millions of people using it in lots of different contexts, yeah. and then give me a call. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. You're encouraging me to get people to put pumpkins on the head, really, is what no, you're saying? Not, not, no, no, I think maybe just always just figurative, don't them. you think? I think, yeah, yeah, just use it figuratively. Okay. Unless, yeah, I can't see there's going to be a fashion for pumpkins. Okay. <laughs> and... Uh, He's not accepting that. <laughs> I, I think it'll be there. I, uh, I like trying... I'm, when I write a Metro column, I, every now and again, I try, try to get as many new euphemisms for whatever I'm writing about in. So I want to try and get some of these in. Okay. Uh, the one I wrote this week is about toilet seats, and these are some things I came up for new words for toilet seats. Vomiting man's noose. Right. <laughs> Arse stargate, or it could be arse gate. Yes. Bum holder, I mean, that's just obvious. <laughs> and then crap gap and shit slit. So, again, can I get that? Can you put you those in? You probably could. I mean, again, going back to, the, you know, two, 200 years ago, yeah. vomiting had loads and loads of euphemisms, so you could um, flash the hash <laughs> um, or shoot the cat. Yeah. Uh, or if you were, if you had a vice admiral, oh no, an admiral of the narrow seas is right. if you're really, really drunk and are sick in your companion shoes. And if you're a <laughs> vice admiral, <laughs> vice admiral of the narrow seas is when you pee into your companion oh. shoes. Into your it's companion not very nice. But this was 200 years ago. So, and lose, lose loads yeah. of euphemisms. Yeah, it's interesting. Isn't it? so, so that's what I like about Visphanosaurus. It's basically 10,000 definitions yeah. of seven things. I mean, they're yeah, basically it's the same. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Any slang dictionary would be the yeah. same. Yeah. yeah, sex, drugs, money, uh, <laughs> sex. Um, well, yeah, yeah farting, parts of the body. It's all, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's yeah. interesting. So look, I think you might have been on TV more than anybody in the country. Because <laughs> my memory is that you've always been on Countdown, but that's not true, is it? You came into Countdown um, sort of in... Not, yeah, no, ten, not ten always. No, yeah, I didn't. I wasn't on it from the start. And you weren't on it all the time, even when you no, started? No, I really wasn't. There was a whole uh, team of us who, who rotated, and many people <laughs> wished that that was still the case. <laughs> I don't think that's uh, the case. No, I bet they but do. But basically since 1993-ish or something, when you were Well, full-time, only since 2003. Yeah. But yeah, I was, I was rotating. <laughs> um, back in 1992 was but my Do you think anyone's thing. been on TV more? Because you've been yeah. on like 3,000 times maybe on Countdown, something like that. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there are some people. I used to think it was me and the clock left in the countdown team, and now the clock's been replaced. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure that's very good. Um, Alan Titchmarsh, maybe? Nice. Uh, He's done about 200. See? Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's what you're it's amazing to, to have that. Well, as you say, like you're the only person in countdown, you're the, the longest surviving. Uh, person, some of them haven't survived, literally, but mostly. <laughs> <laughs> most I love of them have been, you know. Yes, well, we, but as in, as Richard Whiteley is an amazing man. I've, I, he's the only person, like, apart from royalty or a politician or something. I, when he died, I was in a shop in, on the Uxbridge Road in Shepherd's Bush, and a man turned to me who I didn't know and said, Richard Whiteley's died. Oh. And, like, you know, a stranger. That. And it was like one of those moments in, in the country where people could turn to remember. each other. It's like Princess Diana dying, Richard Whiteley dying. It was very, you know, it was a big surprise, and obviously it must have been terrible for you. But he was yeah. he was a hilarious man on he the was. show. He was. I mean, Richard wore his heart on his sleeve. So if he yeah. was grumpy, you definitely knew it. <laughs> uh, but equally, he was just very funny, very very sweet. Taxi drivers in Leeds hated him for some reason. I have not <laughs> met a taxi driver in Leeds who I think he used to literally get in the back of the cab and say, "Take me." home yeah because uh, they'd know where he was but i think that's about it yeah um but he were if you he, he had a mem there was a memorial service for him in york and uh, yeah that was that was very emotional very yeah. very emotional and just littered with people who had these fantastic memories and he was also incredibly good journalist so he interviewed every single prime minister bar harold Wilson, i think in his lifetime right so um yeah he was he was a really good parliamentary uh journalist yeah and spectacularly bad at puns, as we all know. <laughs> um, but lovely man. Yeah, just a grumpy one sometimes. Which is your least favourite countdown host? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> that I just can't. I can't possibly comment. Yeah. Um, no, we used to. They, they, were, 
Yeah. I loved Des Lynham was yeah. just, you know, I, I, well, who can't love Des? But he, it's a hard he, job. People, it gets through the months and after Whiteley went, it's been there's been quite a big turnover of people yeah. not being able to cope with the demands of hosting Countdown. Um, yes, I think. <laughs> De, well, I think Des just found the travelling too much, and he didn't need to do it really because yeah. he was close to retirement then anyway. Um, and uh, Jeff just decided to focus on sport, although he's now doing a quiz show, so I <laughs> don't know what that says about us. But, um, and Des, Des O'Connor would just, he would far prefer to be in front of the audience singing for yeah. an hour and a half, which he used to do regularly, than actually sitting in the countdown chair. <laughs> he, is, he is a performer. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Out of all the, because I often think with a lot of those quiz shows, you must, like, deal or no deal, Yeah. that must be hard to go into work every day. I think being Noel Edmonds. I mean, no, it must be quite hard being Noel Edmonds. But to go into work every day and think, oh, God, I've got to do, pretend that I give a fuck. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Whereas at least Countdown, like, loads, there's loads of different people. and then, There's loads of different and, people. And, and it's, it's, genuinely, the, it, I just, I just, the biggest cliche in the world, but it is like a family. So, yeah. so many people have been there since the beginning. Sure. Um, and we have a real laugh. We really do. And I still get really nervous. If, if we've been out, because we haven't been in studio now for a few weeks, when I go back, I will still be very nervous. Right. And I'm being beaten quite a lot at the moment because we have some fantastic people in. Right. Um, but that's the honesty of the show. So, you know, we're not... we're not. I, I have an earpiece. I can say this publicly because there's been so much rubbish about me in the earpiece. Uh, we all have earpiece. Actually, yeah. Rachel doesn't have an earpiece. Um, and the gallery plays along too, but we will never, ever use a computer. No. As in, uh, on my laptop, I don't have an anagram finder or anything. Right. So frequently we don't get the longest word. You um, usually do. I think there's only been once or twice where, oh, I, where I've time. kind of thought, oh, I've thought of one that they haven't thought yeah, of. Yeah, no, I've But I'm not that good. I'm not as good at Countdown as I am at Scrabble. Scrabble? Yeah. Though you are an ace at Scrabble, aren't I'm you? I'm all right at Scrabble. Yeah. But I'd be better if BU was in there. I'm extremely competitive, but I always lose at everything, <laughs> apart from Scrabble. Yeah. yeah. I see, I don't play Scrabble because... Yeah. This is, this is my story and I'll stick to it, but because the dictionaries are so different that I would just get very confused as to what was allowed when. So I never play it, even sometimes in t t sort of deep secrecy, I'll play it with my family, but anybody could beat me at Scrabble. That's <laughs> just a big, big confession. People think I'll be amazing, but actually I'll be really rubbish. But Colin Murray beat me famously. Right. So he thrashed me so much, he's still got the score sheet on his fruit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you, le do you try and learn the like words for countdown though or do you just you, you know do you think oh that would be a good word for countdown i'll remember that or yeah i try yeah. i try and remember those but also obviously it's very circular so <laughs> and anyone who gets bored by the show would say yes it's very circular <laughs> but no it is so the, the, the same words come, yeah, course, come yeah. up again and yeah. again um and i love my laptop now I don't know if everyone was really gutted when we moved from the printed dictionary. Maybe me. I was the, the one talent in life was that I could look a word up really quickly. Yeah. I had the biggest dictionary flicking finger in the world. Yeah. And now even that's gone. <laughs> and I just that's one of my euphemisms, I've got so, um, <laughs> I knew that was thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I saw the guy, one of the guys from Eggheads. I don't like Eggheads. I wouldn't have any of them on. I, would, I might have had CJ on just to ask him about the murder and stuff. But uh, <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever murdered anyone by pushing them into a canal? Mm, no. no. Uh, so if you had done and then you admitted, that would be a story there. But I've got you, like, <laughs> uh, I, he'd be quite interested to have on, but I don't like them. But Kevin from Eggheads, I once saw in Pizza Express, uh, eating on his own, just learning facts. From oh, book. really? Yeah. And I, that is the kind of commitment that okay, makes him the I chief Egghead. So. I've got to do the chase quite soon. Have you seen? Have you? Is that terrifying? I haven't done it, but okay. I, it's uh, yeah. I think it's quite. I quite like that. I, I prefer you? pointless. So I kind of watch pointless. So have you been on pointless? <laughs> I, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Might have. Uh, I can't. I can't really remember. It's not something. That I, uh, certainly not something I would mention if I'd been on it. <laughs> been on it a couple of times. Yeah. I haven't, so. I was on celebrity. Have you done celebrity mastermind? Should you do that? Yeah. Have you done it? You were brilliant. No, I have I to say, I, I, was, win, I was asked a few times, and I just thought the only way I can go is down. <laughs> but it's it's the learning, isn't it? It's a specialist subject. So you do generally have to spot up on you that. You do have to spot up, but you you're very clever, so you could. Is it is it too much of a? Is that your worry that people think you're going to be super yeah. clever? So that's my you worry with the chase as well, because it's general knowledge. Uh, it's not. It's quite well. The chase is sort of. They are, some of it's just difficult, but you can usually take a pun. They give. Um, yeah. Multiple choice on the other ones. Okay. The first ones. Um, I need to watch some telly, really. Yeah. There, it's quite hard, I think, the chaser, and it's quite hard to beat the chaser, so you, you don't have to worry, right? 
Okay. He can't really win it. It's Paul Sinner. We've had him on. I went out in the first round of Pointless as well. Did you? Yes. Oh, that's good. I was with them. Well, as, as Dan advice, Snow. <laughs> what, what went wrong in Pointless? <laughs> well, Graham Garden was what went wrong. Oh, yeah. Because we, uh, I think the question was, name a country beginning with S-E-C-O-L-I, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. C- uh, it was S-E, yeah. And um, Liechtenstein, that was my, I, I mean, talk about spotting up. Yeah. Every single person there had learned... I don't know, 50, 100 stats because they uh, they knew what was going to come up anyway. Yeah. Um, she says defensively. <laughs> and this came up and Liechtenstein, I was just literally, I was all, like one of those person in that we have to wait for your turn. And Graham Garden said Liechtenstein, um. pointless answer. I didn't, I hadn't even thought I'd needed a backup because I was so proud of Liechtenstein. And Liberia. then I said Senegal, right. which was 50 or something. Was and it? then, yeah, and then Dan said Cook Islands, which aren't a country. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah but I was always, literally on, on there for five minutes. It's and then always I the other person letting you down. That's the what I No, think. no, I, I think he, he went for broke because I let him down. <laughs> so, yeah. The Cook Islands is a country. Doesn't begin with LI, though. No, no, CO was on there. Oh, CO was a letter. Yeah. Okay. I love I love quizzes. That's why I I'm can kind tell. Of, you know, I'm, I, I'd quite like to. Well, I'm quite old already, but I'm looking forward to being seventy, so I and can just spend sitting. all day <laughs> watching quizzes. Do you like tipping Are you point? The sort you of should go on tipping point. No. You'd be great on that. Would I? Yeah, because it's easy. <laughs> tipping point. And it's just the s- stuff falling off a ledge. <laughs> okay, I haven't so, seen that one. I mean, how does Ben Shepherd go in every day? <laughs> oh God, is it? Yeah, there's. What do you think's going to happen? I build it'll fall off or it won't, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Let's see. Yeah, you were right. It was one of those two things happened. So at least you've got, in, you know, you've got to come up with anagrams. You get to do a little story about a word every day. Yes. It's exciting. It is. No, I do. Yeah. I genuinely love it. And then, of course, we have the 8 out of 10 cats version. Yes, of course. Which I now see. I never, ever watch anything I do back, ever. Uh, so I've never watched those Aston Cats, but apparently I sit there, and the way they edited it, that I sit there imperiously as if I'm looking down on everybody, which is not the truth. I laugh a lot during that you show. You should look down. Apart from when Jimmy insults me, and you're then I cry. Than of, you're better than all of those people. No, I'm so not. And then, uh, yeah, so it's like, do I look really stern all the way through? I don't think so. I think you look like you're having a good time. It's, an, it's interesting that that... that, that because I've tried uh, with Deal or No Deal I said they should do a late night version of Deal or No Deal yeah. where you have a Pope commentary over the top saying how rubbish everything that Noel Evans <laughs> is saying <laughs> statistically I think that would be great you know so I think it's interesting you can take like a, a format that is probably apart from me for the uh, the elderly people <laughs> at home who are doing nothing in the afternoon yeah. uh, and, and comedy Paddy's. writers yeah and Paddy's Paddy's like. but it's a great show it's a great show but I think like all these no, things that all these things are like you know I'm looking forward to being old age if I live that long so I can just do them without feeling guilty. Uh, I like doing kakuris and sudokus. You know, I can just do that all day, playing Adam's Family Pinball. That's all I'm, I'm going to do. That's all I do now. I don't know why I'm sort of waiting for 20 years. Uh, but uh, it's interesting that you can take it and make it sort of hip and, and mess around with it a bit, but it's still... Work. I mean, it's, you know, the game still works, but you're having sort of fun with it. Yeah, no, we have lots yeah. of fun. The, the sort of agony for me and Rachel is, um, is that we're not comedians, as you can tell. And so that in the real show, I don't know how long it is on the, on the um, transmitted show, but in the real show, it's about an hour before they get to us. And we've had an hour of very funny introductions, mascots, comedy, people falling over. And then Jimmy will say, so Susie, what's your favourite American word? And I have to think of a favourite American word and try and be funny. And, yeah. and I always fail. Yeah, so no, that's try to be funny. Just tell them the answer. This. It's, if I was ever yeah. on that show, I would refuse to join in with the hijinks. I would okay. say, just be <laughs> this is Countdown, have some respect. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play it properly or not at all. That's I what I would do. Got, and then I would take Thursday, it very seriously. I don't think I'm... Very, so I'm not... I played... We did, there was an Edinburgh version of it which I think was unofficial. I don't know if it, it was before the, the TV version. I don't know if someone took the idea from that, but the, we, I played Countdown in Edinburgh uh, as a... And it's really difficult, especially to do the numbers, I think, in the time. Yeah. But even... Because you, you, even if you think, oh, I'm, 30 seconds, this isn't a long enough, is it? So you think, you're looking at it. And the clock going, is really loud yeah. you're sitting there as well. I'm going to yeah. get you in Dictionary Corner, then. OK, I'll come in to Dictionary Corner. Good. Don't um, speak. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come all over it. <laughs> uh, not so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bring the pumpkin. Um, Actually, you could model a pumpkin. Yeah, that's how yeah. you could get it going. Is you could come on, in come one. and model it on countdown. Yeah, yeah. I think I'd probably get in the, get some publicity. 
<laughs> for the word gumpkin. Um, what old words would you like to see make a comeback from the olden days that aren't, you know, oh. they don't have to be rude ones, they can be. They don't have to be rude. No, they can be, but they don't have to be rude. Uh, so, oh God, so many. I thought I, this is my this is my notebook yeah. that I take with me even when I'm um, out in a rowing boat. I take a little book with me, and I always write these down. But they're a bit Are odd. Are you out so in a rowing boat? If you look often. at that one, you'd think that last one. I don't think you can read my writing. My brother Jack's off. Yes. So <laughs> that, that, good to know. So that I wrote down because um, it's a ex- good example of why you need to put in an apostrophe. Because if you say, my brother Jack's off to the women's football, yeah. that's one thing, but if you miss the apostrophe. So that was just yeah. an example that I wrote down. Um, just to remind yourself. <laughs> no, I do literally, okay. I just wrote it because I heard, yeah, I yeah. Did just because I heard it. Uh, and yes, do you want me to carry on? I do, I check? find this um, absolutely amazing. So. Okay. Um, oh, I've, yeah, these, these are things that, uh, you know, I said I'm not very good with rude words. Yes. I've actually sent loads of tweets not realising what I was saying was <laughs> quite rude. Uh, gerbled is one, if anybody saw that. <laughs> uh, this is gerbled, J-I-R-B-L-E-D. Right. And I love this word because if you uh, gerbil your tea, you spill it because your hands are a bit shaky. Okay. And I stupidly put something like, to gerbil is to spill liquid as a result of unsteady hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that was that one. Um, and poon, pooning was another one. That <laughs> to poon a table is to put a little bit of cardboard underneath a wobbly leg okay. to stabilise it, which I thought was very useful. Uh, so I was, yes, I think I said that sometimes people need pooning as well as tables or something. <laughs> anyway, that wasn't very good, yeah. Um, uh, what else have I got here? Inexpressibles, just noted that down the other day because I love that. It's just an old euphemism for trousers. So they were allowed to call somebody a lobcock, yeah. but they couldn't refer to their trousers. So they were the inexpressibles or their great. unmentionables. Yeah. It were their breeches, which I quite like. Um, these are just very <coughs> random. Oh, lactose intolerant. Have you heard of egg corns? Yes, yeah, because Adam yes. and Joe used to do a lot yeah, of these. Of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's one of my favourites. Instead of being lactose intolerant, people yeah. are saying they're lactose intolerant, lactose. which I totally get. And Lord of the Dance Seti is my one. That was oh, my no, show. I loved yeah. that, of course. Yeah. 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 That was, I think, one of my first tweets was saying <laughs> how clever that was. And I realised I was about 10 years behind everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, cold slaw is another one. Somebody saying, I've got a massive cold slaw. Yeah. Uh, cold, cold slaw cold on, my, uh, on my lip. And someone the other day saying that um, they were thanking her friend for a cup of coffee and she said, I'm internally grateful. <laughs> I thought it was very good. Anyway, going back to, well, you see, what were you asking me about? I was asking you if there's any old, any of the old words that, because there's loads of fantastic words from the olden days that have completely fallen out of use. I mean, obviously, yeah. if you go back far enough. Yeah. But, uh, uh, well, I see how I tend to just, I never really think how old they are because yeah. just for me, they're just in my currency. So today, uh, I was thinking about two, uh, for fairly obvious reasons, uh, about people who uh, talk a lot about subjects they don't know very much about, <laughs> um, and they're bloviators. And then people who talk endlessly and emptily and promise lots of things that they can't ever keep are clatter farts <laughs> um, or blatteroons. I like those as well. Yeah, those are good. Uh, what else? Um, so I quite like all sort of technical things as well. I don't, I don't always speak like this at home, but if you, you know, if when your leg's gone to sleep, yeah. that is technically called obdormition. Oh. I quite like that. Nobody else does. No, um, or kissing is osculation, which the Romans thought was actually really sexy, <laughs> but it doesn't sound very sexy. Osculating, osculating. Osculating. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, wait, I, I, what I get, what I get a lot on Twitter is if you make a mistake on Twitter, like grammatically, yes, like uh, nine items or less, yes, those sort of things, people get very angry about them. But mm. I think that this is evolution of language, right, which I think is a beautiful thing that, yeah. that that a word completely changes its meaning as it goes goes along. So yes. now nine items or less is the correct thing to say now. So whenever anyone says that, I say, you know, uh, that's well, fine as long as you're speaking Anglo-Saxon the rest of the time. You know, because ang- language changes. It does change. And it's not that that is correct. Yeah. It's, um, 
<laughs> can I put that? Because we talk about standard or non-standard. So yeah. when you work with dictionaries, you don't say, this is how you've got to say something. So the fact that people are saying from the gecko instead of from the get-go, yeah. ultimately, that may change. Yeah. So um, another one, which is, is, this is not quite as funny, but it's, it's a um, good example. Is today we curry favour. Uh, but originally, it was to curry Favel, F-A-V-E-L, and okay. Favel was this, mil- this horse, this mythical horse in a legend right. about how um, servants, some servants wanted to suck up to their king, so they would curry, they would literally get a, a curry comb and comb this horse in order right. to suck up to the king. Yeah. But nobody knows who Favel is, and Favel makes sense if we stuck that in. So, you know, things will replace, the, the wrong ones will replace the right versions over time if enough people use them. And is there a day when you come in and they go, oh, it's changed now, this is a day. <laughs> so that is, now it is curry favour. Yesterday we'd have told them off, but now it's allowed. No, you see, we never tell off. <laughs> Let's call us know. John Humphreys tells off, but we never do. But yeah, we do have strange discussions about that. And yeah. what we look at are these vast databases of current language where you can see, uh, you know, which one is... is is in the ascendancy and which one's not. So yeah. five items or less used to be non-standard, but now it's sort of you know just a standard. And eight in, in I don't know, 1700s, kings and queens used to say ain't, yeah. and they would have said less then as well. So a lot of things we think is, of as being wrong, like disinterested used to mean uninterested a yeah. long time ago. So the good excuse you can use to anybody who corrects you on your grammar is, well, back in 1400, <laughs> uh, that was right. Yeah. So it was, and it changes you know, to get over it. It does. And words, over it. words have these incredible well, journeys, as you say. I love word histories. That's my, that's my passion. Yeah. Word histories. Well, it is. It's, it's fascinating. But um, <laughs> it is. It is. I know it sounds sarcastic, but I'm not. <laughs> and uh, how do you choose? The new, there's new words every year, right? And most of them, disapp- uh, the word of the year, and then you never hear about them again. Yes. Um, how do they, how do they decide which... Are there any words from 2016 that are going to go in the dictionary that you know of? Now, Brexit, perhaps. Uh, Brexit, I'm just hoping that's not going to be word of the year because I tend to do the, um, some of the PR for the word of the year. And last year was very controversial, so you probably know because they chose an emoji. Okay. Uh, yeah, they chose the um, crying with laughter emoji, okay. um, which is making a point about language that it's pict- pictorial, etc. Something should not change. <laughs> Davis didn't like that one. I can't see emojis because I'm, I'm going too blind. So if there's a tweet with an emoji and I don't know what, I just see a little blob there. I'm, I thought I was that. the only person in the world that hadn't paid extra for all the emojis because er, people seem to have an emoji for every situation, don't they? Well, On, okay, not you, youngsters. <laughs> <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> Just write someone with the hearts in their eyes, looking happy. <laughs> That's yeah. what's wrong with doing that. No, you can write, actually write out the words. Yeah. I know we keep talking about penises, but didn't aubergine mean penis at some point? Oh, I think. Okay. I think people would write on, write down aubergine because yeah. the emoji became well, I think it's a, and then the it was banned. Em- yeah, is it because the emoji of the the emoji looks like an aubergine? The aubergine emoji looks <laughs> like a penis. I think that. Yeah, I believe that. Is anyway, the case. so, so what's coming emoji. up in 2016? What's going to be in the dictionary next year? Uh, that's a very good point. Yeah. Well, I won't be in the dictionary because it will take a while. So this oh. is the boring answer. But uh, I don't know. I use the, the Oxford Word of the Year choice is always quite an interesting panel discussion because it's it's not a group of people with beards, women included, in a dusty library <laughs> poring over <laughs> volumes. We're quite, you know, we're quite normal, yeah. sort of. I'm trying to now avoid the question of what's going to be <laughs> up this year because it's been so dominated by Brexit, isn't it? Um, I don't have any strong candidates apart from that one this year. Okay. Not yet. It's quite... It's it's maybe. kind of difficult to make up new words though, right? Most of them are just like t- two words put yeah. together like a broken down car that you've yeah. put. Yeah, it's only about one percent that are entirely, entirely yeah. new. Because m- yeah, most of them are blends. Uh, you know, when I was them, a, when I was at school, we tried to popularise the phrase, which I then carried on trying to popularise, of "cheg on," meaning <laughs> bad luck. Cheg on. You go cheg on. Uh, <laughs> what? Cheg on. Was that to do with cheggers? It, I think it might have come from yeah. Keith Chegwin. Yeah. Originally, ironically, that someone should copy something off of him. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> I think Kevin. Ad- if you ever, if it ever gets in, I think Kevin Adams started that in it, and I then we, and then he was just a kid at my school, and then he, <laughs> <laughs> me and my mate started saying a lot, and then I started saying on I, in Fist of Fun, I say Cheg on Pied Piper, you am a twat. <laughs> Where's that in the dictionary? That's been on the telly, so that should be in. You're, you're an idiot. Yeah, I got that. Yeah. <laughs> Which is because when I was at 
when I was at college, we had a bread rota thing on the wall, uh, which was a sort of joke. I, we, <laughs> we kind of put up loads of... We had a, a bread rota rota, but whose turn it was to look at the rota. So I, mean, I, I, made, I made loads of stupid charts. One of them was a, whose turn it was to buy the bread. And we had all different funny names, uh, like... Uh, and it said Paul Twat Nathan, that was his nickname. And Paul Nathan's mum came <laughs> and read it and said, what is a twat? <laughs> so that's what, that's from then on, twat became twat. So that's, uh, I should put that in the dictionary. And okay. that's, uh, the first, that's an extra this thing. is a geeky thing coming yeah. up, but the first reference of that word yeah. was uh, about um, 1300, I think it was a reference to nuns. Right. Uh, yeah. Just, there was just lots going on in those days. Where's the soap? Was it that? <laughs> uh, so no. Maybe. Where's the soap? Yes, it does. Come on. That's got to be that old, does that joke? Um, all right, I'm going to ask, let's see what emergency questions I can give to you. Does that mean I've been terrible? No, it doesn't. Mean <laughs> it's a, no one's ever got this far without an emergency question. Okay. But my, most of them I would be too... What would you call a man who can suck his own cock? That is my... Uh, what, would the, what would be the name... What is the name for that in the dictionary? Is this a joke? No. It's oh. <laughs> um, I want to know the answer. OK, I'm going to switch this round a bit yeah. while I ponder on that one. And there is a word for... Uh, it's called autolutrophilist, and it's somebody who drinks their own bar porter. Wow. Yeah. Um, should you ever want to do that? And arachnobatine something of phobia... It is made up, so I can't remember it, but it's, it's the fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of your mouth. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I have no idea okay. is the answer to you your should, first question. You should be ready for that. Because <laughs> what I like about you is the idea of you is that, you know, you're my ideal woman because we could just be in bed and I just go, what's, what the, de what's the definition of that? And you go, is this? <laughs> my <job. laughs> Okay, try me. Don't even need to get a dictionary. Just go. Oh, you mean Think you of the money you've saved on a dictionary there. That is 12 quid. <laughs> 12 quid, 15 quid. Yeah. So, you know, so romantic. Your husband's a lucky man, that is all I'm saying. He goes, any time. He never asks me for not? any definition. Ever. I would ask you all no. the time. <laughs> <laughs> you are married to me. You'd be, t you'd be defining all the time. You'd you'd be going, can I stay in at work? You want to come home. Come home from a long day of defining stuff. When I get home, I just want to not define anything, all right? I don't want to know what the definition of stuff is. I'm relaxing. You'd, be, you'd hate being married to me. But you want a word factory. You want somebody to make the words out of your definitions, don't you? That's what you really want. Yeah, well, I want to say what's the word... And what does, how do I pronounce um, uh, approbation? I can, I, never, I can never get that right. Yeah? Got that right. And it's, no, it's the other one. It's the... Uh, what's the one I can't pronounce? There's one I can't pronounce. <laughs> it's a bit like that. Uh, yeah. Appropriate. Uh, yeah, appropriate. Very good. Appropriate. Yeah, I, yeah, can't, I, can, never, I can never pronounce that. I say opprobrium every opera time. Opprobrium. Yeah. And you could go, no, it's not. Like, you say, look at these funny squiggles. And I go, I don't understand them. And you say, well, I do, and it's opprobrium. I think by that point, I'd be giving you a slap. <laughs> <laughs> and does that... I, could, I always get opprobrium and disopprobrium confused. I don't know what it means. What does opprobrium mean? Opprobrium yeah. is like censure. It's like... Yeah, yeah see, I always think it means praise. No, it's the opposite. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I can't say it and I get it, it wrong. I look like a total dick. Oh, I just thought you'd be casting nasturtiums. That's another one that I love. Okay. Casting nasturtiums on people. Um, have, have you ever seen a Bigfoot? So you see in your, in your travels, your travels that around is an emergency from, from, question. from York and Leeds. No, no. okay. No. Uh, have you seriously got that written down? Yeah, that's what I'm I've got any written down for you here. Um, <laughs> good, uh, um, okay, what is a slang wang? What is a slang wang? Yeah. Um, right, see, that's another example. I didn't know that wang was. <laughs> I had no idea. A slang wang is just a slang party. And a. And a, this, um, a slang a party. A wang, a bang wang. Yeah. <laughs> a, a bang wang. I died. Is, <laughs> In What's a good happening? way or a bad What's way? What's happening to me? <laughs> Am I drifting in and out? I've got the Susie Dent from off the tap. No, they have to. Have you not heard of slang parties? You know, no. in India they have laughter clubs. Okay. You heard of laughter clubs? Oh, laughter clubs sounds so. It, you just go what? to. They have laughter yoga. Yeah. And seriously, okay. they go to these gatherings in order to be made to laugh. It's a bit like people are here today. You'd hope, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> and. 
it just fills you with, you know, endorphins and, and good things. So they okay. have laughter yoga, but also they have sort of like, slight, it's a bit like a rapping contest. Okay. Uh, but they have just throw slang at each other. Anyway, I thought it sounded fun. It, was, it does sound fun. <laughs> have you got what it takes to be a spy? Yes. Yeah. I always wanted to be a spy. Yeah, you could be a spy. I've just written a book on um, the kind of codes of different groups uh, of people. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the kind of tri- like modern tribes. So comedians be one of them. They, comedians Check on. Some that's of the one hardest. of the codes. And that's one of our codes. <laughs> yeah. that means bad luck. I have to write that one Check down. On. Uh, but I did spies and I did Freemasons. Oh yeah. They were they were very interesting. Did you know there's more than one Freemasons handshake? There are loads of them. I didn't know. Yeah. So. Then do you have to be in the Freemasons for a while to find out the next one up, or do they well, know about them all of them straight away? No, I think I think it's. Yeah, I think it's just sort of passed on. It's, you have to be male, so I wasn't yeah. privy to any of these, sadly. Um, but uh, And spies have their own sort of body language as well. I, I really would have loved to have been a spy. You Wouldn't could everybody? still be a spy. It's a great MI5 ad, job <laughs> advert that said, um, see all your best work go unnoticed. <laughs> which I thought was perfect. I would have answered that one. How would I have answered it? Or you would have answered, you would have answered. Yeah. Uh, when, I was, uh, when we first went to Edinburgh, we stayed in a Masonic lodge. Mm. Uh, and that was where we, we all just st- slept on the floor and they we kind of broke into all their cupboards to see what the magic stuff was in there. They had a TARDIS in their basement. A TARDIS? They had a TARDIS. A real TARDIS? Well, you know, no. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of TARDIS? Uh, uh, it was tempted to, yeah, and we travelled in time and space. <laughs> no. It looked like a TARDIS, it was like, but it was like he- slightly hexagonal, but it was a blue box that you could go inside. It was probably a prop because they have these these great initiation ceremonies, yeah. wh- which play on people's yeah. I mean, they're quite funny apparently, right. and they play on people's um, jobs or you know tastes or whatever. Yeah. So it was probably a riffing off somebody's personal taste for Doctor Who. Could be, or just police because it's like the police boxes in uh, well, that's what it is, isn't it? But the Edinburgh still has those police boxes. Yeah. Good. Uh, that is a good answer to my question. Congratulations. <laughs> Um, what, what was the question? No, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> here's a question. I've, been, I'm, okay. I've stolen emergency questions from other people. This is uh, marshalljonesjr.com. These are 100 questions to ask people. This is one of the questions. Have you ever tried sushi? <laughs> <laughs> My name is always spelt sushi. Whenever anybody spell checks their document, I oh, come out as sushi den. Oh. So, uh, yes, I love sushi. Yes, yes, most people have. It's an odd question. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have, like, I was talking to Vic Reeves about this last week. I've got a celebrity <laughs> shag list with my wife of five people we're allowed to have sex with. Have you got that? Have you got five celebrities that you would be allowed to have sex with? I'm allowed to. Yeah, or your, your to. husband would say it's fine because they're on the list. You've got um, to have a laminated. Arsene Wenger would be one of oh, them, yeah. but he's a massive Arsenal fan. And so uh, he wouldn't mind your, your probably husband? Probably not. Would. I'm the only person in the world who has a crush on Arsene. I probably. think. Well, I, you know. I just probably had sex crush. before, I reckon. <laughs> I reckon yes. probably. No, as in, a, as in a big crush. I, yeah. think, I think he's amazing. So Arsene would definitely be one of them. Okay. Um, I, this is going slightly off topic. Oh, yeah. But I had to, um, I didn't have to, I wanted to um, <laughs> be in Lee Mack's uh, sitcom Going Out the oh, other yes. day, where I had this cameo role. I'm hoping it would have gone out, but when does this go out? Uh, a couple of months. <laughs> okay. I think it will have hopefully gone out by okay. then. But uh, in which I was um, Hugh Dennis's, I think probably weird crush, but he said secret crush. I'm, I'm always, it's really insulting to be told you're a weird crush, isn't you're it? You're not a weird crush. I think I am. Danny no. Dyer said I was his weird crush on Radio 1. I've never been so upset. Ridiculous. I don't think weird crush is good. And uh, nor accurate. You're a but perfectly acceptable <laughs> crush. <laughs> No, I think I think I definitely I, I work alongside Rachel after all. But anyway, in this scene, yeah, I had fuck to. Yeah, <laughs> Few women going. Oh, yeah, fuck. Oh, no, she's she's astonishing. She's got the whole beautiful. package, hasn't she? She has. Can do maths. <laughs> See, with her, I'd be going, I'd be in bed and going, what seven times five? <laughs> Bam. And straight away, she wouldn't even have to think. It's true. So di- yes, don't don't go any further. About <laughs> That's all I want. Dictionary and maths together. All I want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, the um, Lee Mac thing. You're not a yes, weird crush. Yes. So I had to get or in and out of it. Have you ever, have you ever acted in a in a? Actor. <laughs> <laughs> I have acted, and I oh I continually uh, the last year. What have I done? Nothing. Are you, 
Okay. Uh, the, the last, uh, the parts I'm getting now are all prosti- the blokes who go to prostitutes, and I'm very angry about it. Really? Because I've never been to a prostitute. That's worse than a weird. I don't. Know, this guy doesn't have to pay. Look at that. That's my money. That's the money maker. Uh, so I keep on getting like either weird men who've done strange things to themselves, or yeah. men who go to escorts. <laughs> you know, and I accept the work. But is this for telly? Because I do tell you I don't watch telly. So no, it's not. No, it's okay. I wish. No, I don't. It's just. <laughs> it's just for, pon- it's for pornography, mate. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, I do some acting, yes, but not, yes. not very well, much. Well, this was one scene in which I, Emma Bunton was there oh, yeah. as well, uh, who was Lee Mack's crush. Weird, weird, weird crush? Weird, no, did not come into it, strangely. No, okay. uh, and I had to get in and out of a hot tub. Right. Uh, sort of 15 times. Anyway, knowing that I was a weird crush, it was the, just, yeah, it was just not a very good feeling. What would be worse if that is never on the telly, if that you just, you will t- tune in. Why, why, why is that hot tub scene going? <laughs> they just called me in to get in and out of the hot tub 15 times. Yeah, possibly. Um, but it just, it, the whole thing took about six hours. Yeah, to it takes a yeah. long time. Yeah, it does. Because I'm just used to kind of almost as live telly. So <laughs> anyway, that, that I mentioned that because we were talking about people that you would yeah. be allowed to shag. Who would you be would, allowed to? Uh, well, I've gone over it a lot. I'm trying to think of any... I'm, I'm very interested in um, Rebecca from CBBS <laughs> now. <laughs> She's not really on my list. Uh, Anne w- Anne Widdicombe. <laughs> Anne Widdicombe. Yeah. Oh, and the mum in Topsy and Tim. Yeah, that's I right. I have seen you tweet about her. Yeah, she's I think nice. a lot of men have a crush on the mum. Yeah, she's the nice. Yeah, she's nice. But now I've seen Rebecca. That's, that's I don't gone. think I've seen Rebecca. <laughs> she's great. <laughs> okay, so you watch CBeebies on your I own. I do now. watch... Uh, well, I started watching <laughs> Let's Play on my own. I realised the day I was just watching a bit of it and there was no baby around. I thought, yeah, this is, I've got a problem. I would say. There's one where she's a tennis player, that's a good one. <laughs> and there's one where she's. Uh, there's one where she, she's a tennis player, right? What, what programme is it? It's let's called Let's Play. Oh, and the, the, yeah. idea of the, the idea of the show is that um, Rebecca and uh, this other guy live in a house together for some reason. Yeah, and I've then seen, seen this. suddenly, every now and again, a noise comes and they go, Oh, who will it be? Whose turn it will it be? And then one of them goes into a magic room where they get to play. <laughs> And they get dressed up as something and they go and play. So the tennis player one, which I was very interested to see. Um, <laughs> Rebecca becomes a tennis player and goes and then goes to play the world's best tennis player. But she's never played tennis before. And so she gets a tennis coach and the coach says, yeah, you have to t- do this. And here, <laughs> you have to do this. And that's it. And then she plays against the best tennis player in the world. Did they have the best and tennis player in the world? It was the other guy who was playing. I don't oh, know his name. Not, not interested in him. Okay. Uh, he's, uh, what's his name? New balls, please. <laughs> have you been, Sid, have you been, have you been masturbating over there? Uh, Sid. <laughs> have you been gerbling? Uh, so, uh, uh, Sid's on it, yeah. He's yeah. playing, he plays the other guy, but she manages to play quite well against the best tennis player in the world. And then halfway through the thing, she goes, he goes, oh, that's gone out. She says, what does that mean? <laughs> She's playing the world tennis. It's ridiculous, it's so unrealistic. And it, and it sets up. You know, my daughter might be watching that thinking, oh, I just have to pick up a tennis racket and do that, and then I can be the best tennis player. In the-. It takes a lot of hard work to become the best tennis player in the world. So anyway, that's it. <laughs> that's all I have to say about so Let's Play. It doesn't seem to resonate with my audience this so much. <laughs> it's my, my frame of reference has changed now, and I've left my audience behind. They loved it when I talked about 1970s television that no one remembered, but when I talk about... <laughs> So she's nice, yeah. So Rebecca, yes. if you know, do you meet all the f- people off the telly and the parties and Alex, stuff? Alex, I see quite a lot up in Media City from CBBS. Oh, do you? Yeah. No, do you? You're not, know you're not that interested in Alex. No. Is okay. it a bloke? Not Rebecca, it's a bro- bloke. Um, and. Um, Sid's quite nice, I do quite nice. Yeah. And Justin has had a. Yeah. Yeah, he's had a dressing room quite close to me, but I never, I've never seen him. Wow. It's a bit sad. What about Mr. Tumble? Have you ever seen him? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no. Okay. Or any of the others. No, they're good. He's but good. he plays. He is very good. Yeah. Bit Tyler's good. It's a bit weird, but he's good. <laughs> Something a bit odd going on there. <laughs> I s- said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope not. Um. Okay. I only, I only came up with one. I'll send. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's I think, good. I think that would be one. about it. It's, it's, a, it's a good choice. Uh, if you had to jump into a pool of something, what would you choose to jump into? Jelly. Would you? Yeah. Yeah. Again, you're not worried about that. I think once you've got... If it's a deep pool of jelly, that's going to be hard to escape. 
Uh, I mean, it's fun as you're jumping I in. I really thought it through. And then you're sucked into the jelly. Yeah. And then you're stuck in jelly, and then you you drown in jelly, which is nice for a l- the first bit. This isn't is it? Ben and Holly. We're going to get back to. Oh, the really? Movie. Yeah, they, they go into a jelly flood. They have a jelly flood in Ben and Holly. Yeah, it's oh, really? true. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, let's <laughs> get off kids' TV. You've got kids, right? So it's all right. I have, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's right. It's all right. Mr. Tumble. Well, I got poked in the eye by my daughter today, and it really hurts. What's the worst thing your children have done to you to injure you? To injure me, yeah. I was going to say, probably ask me what the C word was in the, <laughs> in the supermarket. Um, to injure me, uh, well, we have pillow fights yeah. a lot, a lot. Uh, so I have, uh, just, yeah, I think I've fallen off the bed a few times. Um, I'm just trying to think. Oh, yes, I did get, um, we were playing, you know, you can play, we used to call it French cricket with a yeah. tennis racket and the ball. Yeah, I did get the tennis racket put somewhere that was very painful. Yeah. <laughs> I've forgotten all about that. <laughs> Thanks. That's we a very did, weird we did, question. We Was that from the same person who asked about sushi? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's from me. It's the child related I got poked injury. in the eye. Why oh. do we have frozen peas? That's what I need to find out. My wife asked me the other day why that. we have frozen peas. Why do we have frozen peas? And you no, can get we, fresh peas. Yeah, you can, but generally... <laughs> Generally, we have our peas frozen, but no other vegetable. I mean, you can get frozen vegetables, but you don't always have the I'll frozen broccoli. I'll tell you why. Broccoli. It's because it locks in the vitamin C. Well, it's the... <laughs> <laughs> Not as much as just eating it naturally. <laughs> um, <laughs> I won't ask you that one. Oh. <laughs> and it wouldn't make sense. Uh, what's, the, okay. do you ever, what's the worst rumour you've ever heard about yourself? Have you ever heard any rumours about yourself that aren't true? Um, rumours uh, yeah well Wikipedia yeah. Wikipedia is always wrong about me and I've always thought I never want to change it because I'm quite a hugely private person and I always quite like the idea that nobody knows very yeah. much about me so for a while it's not. it wasn't the worst one it was actually quite funny for a while I was in prison in Cambodia <laughs> um, and I was married to a paperclip billionaire wow I, didn't, I never knew if that meant I was married to a paperclip <laughs> or whether a he very was a billionaire paper. through paperclips do you think you'd become a bit I mean, you have to sell a lot of paperclips to become a billionaire <laughs> you? I mean you really well, there can't be get much per paperclip I you'd like the way your mind works. You'd have to sell like a hundred, um, hundred million paper clips. Probably. Well, there must that's be not even a billion. So, you know, that's <laughs> 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 Probably more than that. And one of them is made out of pure gold with diamonds on it, and that one costs a billion pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Do you stay friends with the contestants from uh, Countdown? Because <laughs> they look like the kind of people you'd quite like to hang around with. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is the thing I love about Countdown yeah. is that we do not get the contestants on for their sort of telliness. No. So they don't kind of, you know, <laughs> shout no. or jump up and down or... Uh, you I know, thought you said they don't shower is what I thought you said, <laughs> but that is, that is probably true they also. They do shower, they do shower. Um, <laughs> do I... So yeah, there is, there's actually quite... A, and I've used the word family again, but for every Countdown final, you'll yeah. probably have half the audience will be previous champions and things coming back and most of them are very normal uh, and <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't believe me and um, in fact all of them are really normal and they're, yeah. they're genuinely, <laughs> genuinely suddenly changed up. all of them are oh, well, I don't know who I was thinking of there <laughs> uh, so yes we um, do we do that, yeah good. you'll see if you come you will see and also they have um Pens and papers on the on the chairs, so you know everybody could get stuck in. This is something so <laughs> geeky. But even for cats, does countdown people play along? Yeah. Do, is, do <laughs> they, when they're cleaning the seats from the audience afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Which audience are you thinking? I'm just no, I'm sorry. For either, really. Um, well, like on countdown, is there a rule that you're not allowed to have really rude words? Because there was one episode of countdown where you. D, F, C, K, E were in the nine. Yeah. Uh, no, and everyone went for five letter words. And <laughs> I, I can see a six letter word there. Yes. So they're not, were they not elected? Did they go, I've got it, it's fucked. And you went, no, you can't have that. Come back with. Um, it, there was a specific watershed. So you yeah. can have wanker, for example, but right. it's beeped out, which is very strange. Yeah. But people can offer it. Um, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, 
So they could just say have... a thing could come down saying the rude that the word that was chosen was two rope, but was six letters. It should be it matters. Yeah. The competi- I can't believe people went for five letter words. Um, I'm not sure they did. I think we might have had to replay that round. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, if I remember rightly. But yeah, there's there are very strange watersheds. So gobshite yeah. is fine. Yes. Um, and <laughs> yes, and I trying to think of other ones that we have allowed. But yeah, no, the, the watersheds are quite tight with Channel Four. Yeah. So we do tend to avoid them. I think well, we not. I think it should be allowed, and then just public. it should say the, the word that was chosen. The, the, there should be a like a blue Peter when someone takes cocaine. Someone comes <laughs> on and goes, "We're really sorry, Richard Bacon did that. <laughs> <laughs> he, won't, he won't do it again. We promise." So someone should come on and go, we're sorry, the word the man came up with was too rude to say, but I mean, look at the letters, it's obvious what it is. <laughs> and if you know, you know, and if you, it's the same with the child looking up a word in the dictionary. You're not going to chance across that, you're not going to get to F. So, uh, <laughs> once you've got to C, you go, well, <laughs> that's what, what I've got. Have you got your, this is daughter, isn't it? I have, Have yes, you got her dictionary yet, or is she still... Tiny. No, she's too tiny. She's 16 months old, okay. so she's not able to read. She enjoys, <laughs> she likes books. She really likes Does books. She? Yeah, we go to the library when she does do s- singing and dancing and stuff. She just goes away, she won't listen to any of that. She just goes and picks books off the shelves. Aww. Doesn't, you know, she, just pictures and stuff. She's an idiot. <laughs> uh, but, uh, <laughs> no, she's good. She's don't get her an adult dictionary, is what I was going to suggest. Well, no, I think it's good. That was so much fun, that naughtiness of looking. I mean, I yeah, really start know, with the child's one. Richard. Yeah, but what's th- what rude words are going to be in that? <laughs> <laughs> I've got to train her up to be a comedian. I'm going to train her up to be a comedian. Oh, so okay. it's very imp- I've decided that for her. She's going to she's going to avenge my failed career <laughs> <laughs> by being the best comedian ever. And then when she is, she's just been completely endorsed by me saying, "Have you ever acted?" <laughs> um, acted? Well, no. You know, I, I wouldn't say acted because I inhabit the parts <laughs> so well. Um, so can you get Cumpkin in Cheg on? Uh, probably out of them. Our Stargate was probably the best one. Out of those. What's your favourite words though? Have What's my favourite word? Yeah. Oh, there's so many to choose from. Yeah. I like crepuscular. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Richard Whiteley's was moonset, which kind oh, of is it? Well, that's a sim- that. similar area. Yeah. What's your favourite? What's the best well, word? Crepuscular is lovely, but dimpsy is also beautiful. That's from Devon, and it means twilight. Dimpsy. 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 It's a bit dimpsy out there. Oh, I love that. That is nice. Yes. Well, you know, it's sort of like we've got to a natural end and we were talking about twilight and moonlight. <laughs> and we're all... In the twilight years. Oh, it's nice, nice. We're going to have a little nap. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll come back and talk about some more. Well, let's have another five-minute nap. How's the football going? Oh, yeah. Can anyone know? What? <gasps> what an embarrassment this country is. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> an awful embarrassment look it's been really lovely to have you on I'm Thank a massive you. fan and uh, you're not a weird crush and Rachel Riley is d- not all that is she <laughs> yeah Rachel so, if you're uh, listening he's giving you a thumbs up uh, let her know she, if she knows Rebecca from CBeebies <laughs> we can maybe work something out between the three of us <laughs> but that is that's as far as I will go with uh, <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. Ladies and gentlemen, Susie Dent. Thank you. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>